Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, look at uh, recording a screen video using Captivate. So we launch Captivate. We're going to go to File, Record New Project. Okay, now notice we get this uh, red uh, rectangle. We can also choose an application. We can choose, and then we can choose an application or screen area. We've done screen area in this case. Okay, we can also choose a custom size or full screen. We're choosing a custom size, and then we can, in a custom size, we can actually choose some some of the presets that are self-explanatory. In this case, we've researched the best size for our supported hardware. In this case, we're using netbooks, so and iPads. So we had to come up with a one that would work for everything. Now, under recording type, we want to choose. We've we've uh, done some testing on this, and we found that full motion works best. Manual panning, and then we want to choose the microphone we want to use. This is especially uh, usually it's set to no narration by default, so you want to make sure you choose the correct microphone. And if you have an external microphone, that's a, you know be another selection there. Okay, let's go under settings. So in general settings, we just need to select where we're going to publish it to. In this case, we're going to choose desktop. Uh, under defaults, we don't need to change anything. Under settings, we need to choose just narration for the audio options. Everything else is unchecked except for these last two checkboxes. And then we need to go to audio settings. Choose the choose the microphone that we want. We want variable bit rate with the highest quality. We also want to calibrate the input. This is the when the first time you open Camtasia, whenever you start Camtasia for the first time, or you know every time you start Camtasia, basically you want to change. You want to check this. We want to set our preamplifier level. Just start with 0.2. Um, it'll be 0 0.175, 0 0.2 seems or 0 0.125, 0 0.2 seems to work better for me. You want to check it yourself. Click auto calibrate, and we're gonna. You want to see a little bit of yellow when you auto calibrate. Okay, then we can record ourselves. Actually, record the audio that we're making. We can stop and then play back record ourselves. Actually, record the audio that we're making because that was me playing it back. We can play back that audio just to check it for sure. Remember that your volume that you set should be in the middle of your volume to test it, so that you get an accurate, you know, feel for what the user is going to hear. Click OK to set it. Click OK again in the audio settings. Click OK again in the preferences or in the settings. Okay, so we're ready to record. So we click the red record button. It gives us a countdown. Notice it says Control S to stop. Okay, so let's say that we're going to um, do a tutorial on Google. Notice that in the user will only see what's inside the red rectangle, and we've set it to manual panning, so that red rectangle is going to remain the same, uh, stay in the same spot until we move it. So we could maybe type in Google because we want the user to see us typing. We keep it up at the left-hand corner. In general, I always start at the left-hand corner. Notice that I don't have the, the window collapsed here. Okay? So we want to have the window big enough where the user gets a good feel for what it would look like on their own screen. Okay, so now I'm going to do a Google search, so I'd move the window down. Now, I've gone and I've, I've done this at least once before. So... Uh, that will give you a good feel for where you need to do your panning at. So we're going to search on bears, but not polar bears. Okay, so you would be telling the user how to use. Um, you'd be using. You'd be, you know, telling the user what they should be doing. Remember that when you're doing the videos, you want to be conversational. So you want to act like you're sitting in a chair next to the person, not standing in the front of a room lecturing to them. You also want to be respectful and polite, but familiar with them. So act like essentially act like you're talking to your grandmother uh, on these videos. You want to you want to you, you know talk slowly and carefully and give very plain instructions and don't assume that they know a whole you know too much about computers. Okay, so let's say we're done with our tutorial. Uh, so we do Control S key combination to stop. Uh, we could have also gone down to the system tray and stopped in the system tray as well. You'll see an icon down there when Captivate's recording. Okay, so we get back to Captivate. You'll notice that it did, it will even stop responding sometimes. After you stop recording, just let it work. You know, it will keep working and working, and finally it will come back to the screen. The longer the video, the longer it will work. So we're going to file, immediately save it. So file, save as, and we're going to save it as sample tutorial. And notice I had to type this in. I've just made it before. Uh, so I just clicked on it to get the file name. So I click yes. Okay, so basically I've saved this. You always want to save it as a CPTX first, so it remains, you have an editable version of it in case something were to happen. If you want to use it again, if you want to, um, if, 
if Captivate crashes, you want to have it saved in this format. So next we're going to go ahead and export our video. So we do File. Remember that original was just File Save, right? Now it's File Publish. Okay, and under Publish, there are, there are options. Now, if, if we had some interaction here, we might want to save it as a Flash file. If you know our Captivate had some interactions, but in this case we're just doing a screen video, so we just click on Media, we select MP4, we rename it if it needs to be renamed. That's going to be the file name, and we choose where it's going to be saved. In this case, the desktop. We click Force Republish All Slides. Um, that just takes care of a bug in uh, in Captivate. Um, I won't go into it, but you just need to click force republish all slides every time you export, or I'm sorry, every time you publish, and then finally click publish. And we do want to overwrite it in my case. Okay, so now the Adobe Captivate Video Publisher will launch and start working. At this point, we're going to end the tutorial, just because we don't want to wait, obviously, for a minute and 50 seconds. Um, but in the end, when this has finished, when this bar goes all the way over, you'll have your MP4 video on your desktop. Good luck.